I'm really thankful to God for his wonderful love, mercy, grace, and his loving kindness and his tender mercies. He's always at work in our lives mightily, and he loves us. He's called us. He's chosen us for great things. The former things are gone, and now, behold, all things have become new. And God wants us just to continue with him and to keep our focus there, just to enjoy life, joy every day. We don't have to get hung up or strung out about different things. We are where we are in our walk. And um, God is walking us through at the perfect pace where we are. We're not in competition. And um, so we're all at different levels in, in understanding, speaking, thinking. No one's better than anyone else. God can fast track people with desire. And we just keep that desire before him. You know, where there is no vision, the people wander in aimlessly. You know, and that vision is God's revelation to our heart and what he's directing our life and what he wants us to do. And sometimes we might have feelings, emotions and thoughts that uh, kind of may make us feel down. But like we don't pay attention to it. It's like, we, you know, when we practice to not pay attention to those things, you know, there, there's things that we can do. Number one, God says, cast all your cares to me because I care for you. I am with you. No, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto me. And God will take care of that. That peace which passeth all understanding will be there. And every day, in a day, if you're going through something, he will keep your heart at peace. If you go to him, if you focus your mind there, and when you wake up in the morning, pray. You know, we talk about confession, which is most important. But the, the most important thing is not to forget to pray. You know, pray first and according to your prayer, then you can confess along that, can't you, as God inspires you? You know, if you're praying, believing for something, you give it to God, you place it in his hands first. And then your confession is, I am blessed. My God has got this. My God has taken care of this already for me. I trust in my God. All his promises are yes and amen in Christ, you know. So it's like... That will build your faith. That will get you out of any dump that you might uh, be falling into because of the circumstances, situation. Someone said, I think it was Sakina or someone else, actually. I'm not too sure now which one, but it was like, you know, it can be tight at Christmas for some people. You know, and I think of those things as well. You know, I, I can remember when we began, you know, I was 20 and Kim was 59. No, she was uh, 23. She's older than me. She's my about 18 months. Yeah, she's get excited. She's my you? sugar mummy, but a great sugar mummy too. Oh, and a great woman. She's a great, fantastic yeah. woman. But we started off. We had nothing. We had nothing. We didn't have, have anything. And uh just enough to get by, you know. But I knew in my heart that gods are not a get by God, and I didn't know how to get out of where I was until someone came along and gave me some wonderful encouragement and truth. And then I started to believe that. I grew strong. I waxed strong with the things that were being taught me at that time, which I'm so thankful for and keep in my heart. And God is the one that brings these things out of us. So, you know, we don't look at the circumstances. I was always circumstance controlled, even as a believer from my 20s into my early 30s until I went full time, you know, and even then, I was learning to come out of it. So we're at different levels. We're at different walks in our, in our walk with God. Some are just beginning. Some are, you know, a few more steps in beginning and in the middle. And we're getting older. Like I'm 56 now. I'm not a young puppy, even though I feel like I'm 35 still. And what I really do. Said today? You said something today. <laughs> oh, look at that old man and old lady pushing their grandson. Oh, yeah. Like I said, it, I, yeah, that that was funny. We was driving on in the car, and and Kim said, "Oh, look at that uh, that old man with his grandson." I said, "Oh, yeah, that poor old man." I said, "God bless him. That's so cute, isn't it?" And I said, "Hold on a minute. I'm a great granddad." <laughs> it, it was so funny. We were both laughing in the car, and people looking in the car, looking at us, laughing at each other. But you no, know, God is good. Like we we've been on a wonderful journey with God. It's been peaks, it's been valleys, it's been left turn, right turns, more valleys than hills. But now God's brought us to the peak of the hill. And so now he wants us to really move forward in the things that he's now got us to realize and understand. And like I said, this year was, you know, God's desires realized. God's desires for you 
God's desires for me are being realized by me because it is his desires for me. And then I can also see it in other people's life. So God just really wants us to be happy. We can enjoy this time. I can remember every Christmas from how I was taught before I used to dread Christmas, you know, like because of the way it was taught and we shouldn't this and we shouldn't that. And this is this and this is that all the negative things, you know, uh, but we can still enjoy this time with the right mind, with the right heart in the right perspective. And we can still be a blessing. We can still give. We are givers. Believers, real believers are givers, right? We're not takers. We might might receive, but we're more blessed to give than we are to receive. And I find that so true now in my giving. And like, you know, we was out yesterday and Kim said, oh, we need to get this for this person. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And God always takes care. Like he always takes care. We don't think about where it's going to come from. We know that it's going to come from God. He's the source of all of our supply. So when we sit there and worry up to the second knuckle, or well, I can't get this because of that. We're circumstance, even that circumstance controlled in a sense to a level of degree, because like we want to trust God. Like, you know, I was in India and Madhav, Priya's husband, he said, you know, we spend with faith as well like we can spend with faith that we're trusting god to take care of what we spent out that it will come back and it does it really does so god's brought us to different levels of understanding great depths of understanding and i'm just so happy and blessed and i know sometimes when i share things some people don't get it in the sense of the way i'm speaking it and from the understanding i'm talking not that i'm better and more wiser than anyone i'm not saying that but like with the confessions you know some people think you know is manufactured and if we're being honest when we start we do start off manufactured a bit right but then god is energizing you know it's as god gives us the inspiration so for me now when i do my confessions as i call it uh it's energized by god you know i always wake up and the first thing i say i am blessed i am healthy i am wealthy your i ams is what you become so it's just coming out of your mouth and the more you say it if we look at Job, what did he do? He continually thought that his children were doing something wrong. And it just opened up a door. So our confession, our words, we put a guard over our heart and we put a guard over our mouth. So, um, you know, just begin. We need to begin somewhere. You know, we're in practice. We're in training, so to speak. We're learning these things and we're perfecting these things as we continue to do it. No different to someone who's going to be a bodybuilder. They they turn out 10 stone and then as they work out they start to develop muscle they start to put more muscle on they're eating properly and all of a sudden they're nice and big and strong and nice nicely ripped and in good condition it takes time it doesn't happen overnight they have to train they have to practice their what they want to do uh when we went on our diet me and kim i was 19 stone i'm 15 stone now so that's i so there's 14 pounds to a stone. And so you can see how much I lost. It was quite a lot. And Kim was very big too. And then we both slimmed right down. We we went to a thing called Slimming World here. And so it's just eating certain foods. And then we just stuck to that and we come right down. We reduced in weight. It was a great practice. It was a great discipline. And our life is a discipline at times. You know, we're free and yes, we're led by the spirit of God. But there's certain things that we're we're practicing so that we can get the good results, the better results. So when I went on a diet, I went on this diet because I wanted to lose weight. I wanted to fit into some nicer clothes, you know, because all my clothes were like oversized and I looked big and I didn't feel great. And so when we changed the diet, I started to become better and better. It took took a little bit of time, but, you know, a few months to lose a lot of weight, actually. And I started to feel real good. There were certain foods I wouldn't eat anymore. And then there's times when we stop practicing that, then we can put the weight back on. So I put some of the weight back on, not all of it, put about a stone and a half. So a stone is 14 pounds. So I put about 16, 17 pounds back on from the time I slimmed right down to 14 stone, three ounces. But I haven't gone back up to 19 stone, you know, so I still maintain some level of decency in my eating and in my food and what I do. So it's a practice, it's a mindset. It's all about the mind and the heart, and what we're listening to, who we're listening to is so important. So that's our physical side, but what about our spiritual side? Who's conditioning you? What words are you listening to? 
Are you someone that keeps going here, there and everywhere? Because you're going to get confused. Like God wants you focused. And so he can get you to where you're going to really grow. You're really going to become stronger. There's not saying that you can't listen to other things. I'm not saying that. But for me, I've learned because I was someone that would go here, someone that would go there and listen to this one, jump on that fellowship there. And in the end, it just kind of like I was like stagnant. You know, I just wasn't moving forward. I was just going to this fellowship, that fellowship, a niche in here in a way. But now I got my focus from God because I really understood that I wasn't progressing in the way that I knew I could, but didn't know how to. And so I had to become humble. And then I really started to pay attention. And then to that point where I really made up my mind, this is what I'm going to do. God, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to, wherever you show me the connect, I'm going to receive and I'm going to just do it. I'm going to do it. And if there's anything I don't understand, you'll have to reveal it to me or make it plain to me so that I can move. And it reminded me, Becky mentioned Habakkuk 2 too. You know, write the vision, make it plain that he that readeth may run to do it. You know, so like for me, I for me personally, I'm not saying that you got to do this. This is a practice that I think is very good. Scriptural is something that God would have us do is not a bad thing. I'm not reading the newspaper and writing down what's going on in the world. I'm writing down the desires that God is inspiring my heart with. So I don't forget them and that I got them in front of me. I can remind myself of these things. What's my goals for 2024? Write it down. So write all the goals down that you desire. This is what I've done. All the things that I want to see happen. And then I give that to God. Father, this is my desire. I believed you worked these things in me because I prayed and then I've written it down as it comes to my heart. And then I got to see it in my mind. If you can't see it in your mind, you're not going to have it because that's where our faith is. The heavenly words build faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the words from God or hearing the word of God. You can say either way. And so faith comes. And this is the vision. This is the revelation. This is the direction God wants you to take. And he wants you focused with it, you know. So so like if you get focused with it, it's going to be for your maximum benefit. And it, it takes adjusting at times, different things that we're learning because we may have been taught something different or we may have believed a different way. And then all of a sudden this kind of encouragement is coming. You're thinking, well, I never really heard this before. A little bit strange. Oh, I've heard it from some S E C T set over here, or this cult. Oh, they've said that and they promote that. Well, people see the devil can't move without leeching off good, you know. So people will take things, you know, and then incorporate it in their thing. But we want the truth from God and we want to move with those truths. So it takes us, you know, for me, it took a searching of my own heart, prayer, asking God for the real direction. How do I really get moving, God? How do I really start to receive laborers? How do I really start flourishing in my finances? How can I get peace in my relationships? How can we get people that are stable? And like God was saying, well, you need to be stable first. It starts with you. Everything that's on the inside of you will manifest on the outside of you. And if it's wrong doctrine or wrong understanding or the old things, and the old habit patterns, that's what you're going to receive because that's what you believe. That's what you're uh, gravitating towards. If you're thinking that way, you'll gravitate towards that way. If you're listening to this person's advice and it's not spiritual, but it sounds spiritual, then you kind of come to a stop, you know, because God will stop you anyway. He wants you to move his direction where you're going to flourish and go. So all through this year, we've been given the simple encouragement. And sometimes it sounds like we're just repeating. And we are actually because God's energizing that repeating because why would God give something next if you haven't done the first thing? You know, yeah, he can encourage you many different ways, but really he wants you to understand and catch what's being said, like catch these things, take it to God in prayer. What's being shared? Is this what this Lawrence is sharing? Is it like, is it really from you, God? Is this really what you want me to do? And then put it to practice. You'll soon find out. Because of the results you get. God wants you to have maximum results. He wants you to have hope. Lots of people maybe have been around a lot longer than some of the younger people in there. They've had their years wasted. They've had 
time wasted because not because anyone intended to do that but maybe the doctrine wasn't right maybe the people around him was not encouraging or giving them the right advice but god will bring you to where he wants you to be if your heart's for him and i believe everyone's heart on here is for him and not everyone's way you know and what's it say in the scripture a man's our own ways you know are right but like god weighs the spirits every man thinks they're right but god weighs the spirits in proverbs somewhere so you know god really wants us to continue to accelerate you know once we get into the momentum the snowball effect the compounding effect of these truths then the things it becomes clearer to us and the blessings start to come the doors start to open people start to connect people start paying attention to your words even the people that may have never listened to they start to connect. They start to. I want to speak to you. Can I? Can I have a, a a conversation with you? Can I call you? And I'm like, yeah, give me a call. I get this all the time now. Different people call in, and then I just speak as you know they ask me questions, and I just give my testimony. The biggest thing you can do is give your testimony because it's your walk with God and what God's done in your life, and you know what's right in there, and you know what's not right in there. So when you give your testimony of what God's doing for you and doing through you people start to see it and that will turn them on because they 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 may be in a place where they 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 know they they need to be somewhere different but they just don't know so that's why we let people come and we don't judge people after the flesh either you know when we do that like we are very carnal you know when we see people as christ we see them that they're abounding that they're doing really great whether they're on it or off it we see the good in people when we get our mind to that place, then we can really encourage. And then God's got me to the point now where I don't really, um, what's the words for it? It's not that I don't care because I do actually really care, but I'm not worried about the responses no more. Because I always used to get pushed back in a negative sense and it kept my mouth shut. Satan was happy, but he ain't happy no more because even if I make mistakes, I said, God, even if I'm, if I'm speaking something that I believe is right and it's wrong, I know you'll correct me, but I'll still speak it anyway if I, if I don't know. But you correct me as I go. And he does. And he does show us things. He's fine tuning everything in us. But when we're being led by God and we're allowing God to give this to the world, we won't make many mistakes, I can tell you now. you know. And if someone don't get it, that's not on us. Our job is to deliver the message to people and believe God to work in their hearts. Like we pray for people. If we're leaders... And we got people connecting. We really need to pray for every one of them. I do every day. You know, I pray for the people that connect to me or speaking with me. And I just ask God, you show me what you want me to do, how I can encourage this individual. You open up their hearts. You bring them. When you bring them, I know what to speak. And I do know what to speak because God gives it to me in that time. So I don't have to premeditate anything. Sometimes I don't even feel like speaking when someone calls. But the energy is there like god just inspires the words just to come out like the other night i sat here with my two grandchildren i'm not really a tv watcher even though i might watch a little bit here and there but i sat and watched free films with my grandkids and we had a nice bit of fun and it was so lovely that Vinny, my grandson was cuddled up to me and it was really really lovely i chilled out you know it's the first time i've really chilled out so i'm usually in the office taking calls so I love this. I absolutely loved it. It reminded me of being Danny when Danny was younger and um, Leanne and Carl. And it was just so nice. It brought such a great joy to my heart. So anyway, we watched three films and Danny and Amber called about 10 o'clock. And like, it was Tuesday and I totally forgot it was their fellowship. So they usually give me a call, say, oh, we had a great fellowship. They're all excited and all that and I was not kind of in the the mind the mindset because I just done all this chilling watching all this garbage on the television it was comedy films and uh anyway all of a sudden just I think it was Amma just said something or Danny said something and then bang God just energized these words and it was just flowing out of my mouth like a river because it's you know God was just energizing this he wanted them to hear something and they said to me oh it's like having another fellowship they can tell you themselves and it was really brilliant. And I got so energized. It was about 11 o'clock by the time we stopped finish, finished speaking that I, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I was just so blessed. So, you know, it doesn't matter what state we are in our minds at times or in our feelings or, or level of tiredness. 
if we just stay with God, he can just energize you, you know, because I'm dependent upon it. My life's all about God. My life is living unto God. My life is about serving people because that's how God works in me to do. That's what we're supposed to do. Serve one another. Speak the truth in love. You know, on a silver platter. We're the silver platter, right? So anyway, I don't know where I was going with all that, but that's what was in my heart to share. But what I wanted to read you, I was reminded of a record. And as I said earlier on, there's some people that have been on here and been around a lot longer than some of the younger ones. And um, they've been through some stuff. You know, they've been through some different things in their walk with God, with other believers or ministries or whatever. But, you know, I want to tell you, like, God just put it in my heart to tell you this, like, none of your years, none of the things that you've gone through has ever been wasted. God knew all of it. God knows all of it. He knows your beginning through to your end. And everything has worked out perfectly. We just need to stay with God. We need to just come to that point of rest. We need to labor to enter into his rest if you're not in it. We need to let God do the work and not worry anymore. I've got to the point where I don't worry anymore because I know God is going to do the work. And like, you know, I was encouraged by my minister. God is wants to work for you. And it's true. He does, because if he's got the, he's got the listening ear from us, then he can do his work for us, just like he did through Moses, just like he did through Abraham, just like he did through Joseph and all the other wonderful believers before us, all the wonderful prophets, Elijah, David, all these wonderful, great people that we know, the famous ones in there, like, you know, and Gideon and all these great uh, people that God had worked in. And I want to read you from Joel chapter two. And first, I started from verse 24 and I'll read into verse 25 and 26. It says, and the floor shall be full of wheat and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and the pray and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. God has done wondrously with us, and He's going to satisfy you. He's going to make up those wasted years, the heart the dirt, the shame, anything that you've gone through, God is going to restore to you more than double. He wants you to have an abundance of blessings in every area. He wants you to have an abundance of joy, abundance of peace, abundance of hope, abundance of faith, abundance of finance also. He wants you blessed to be the blessing, right? And our God is a plenteous God in every area of our life, not just money. Someone said it earlier on. Prosperity is Madeline. Prosperity isn't just about money. It's about what's in the heart, prospering in your heart. You know, I shared that this year. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. It depends upon your soul prospering, your will, your mind, your emotions, your intellect, your thoughts. And it, that you prosper through the heavenly words and taking it in and digesting it, letting it take root. How does it take root within you? You receive it, you meditate upon it, you practice it, you speak it, you aim yourself in that direction with God. He's working in you. He's energizing you what steps to take. God will put little things in your heart to do. Just do those little things because those little things are like the little goals that get you to the big goal, right? So just do the little things he gives you every day. And God literally takes you step by step. He took me step by step. Took him a few years. I'm a little bit stubborn, <laughs> a little bit slow, you know, 16, born again, went to Pentecostal church, went to Baptist church, went to Methodist church, 20, took the Power for Abundant Living series, all through my 20s, you know, all the different classes, all going to the Rock of Ages, going to this, going to that, running classes then after that, coordinating all these different things, me and Kim done it, plus our own fellowship. But God still, even then I thought I was in my glory moments, but God has more glory. Well. I'm in my glory moments right now, but there's going to be more glory moments. And that's for all of us. 
And in those times, there was a lot of hurt that went on as well. Lots of wrong things said and done and promoted and, you know, navigated. But God delivered me out of them all. And then he put me upon my high place. He directs our steps. He makes our feet like hinds feet and sets us upon our high places. Those are the former things. I'm using it for the learning, right? Through what God's working me to say now is for learning, just like the Old Testament's for our learning. When I look back on my past, that is for my learning. Look how, look where I was and look where I am now. Only God can do that. But I was involved in it too. I had to respond. You know, I had to respond to the prompting of God, the conviction in my heart at times. When I didn't want to do something, I knew it was right. Other things were drawing me away. But then God convicted my heart in a loving way. I just knew I, if I, I need to go this way. So I went, I went the way of God even to the point of giving up my job and going full time. That was such a big challenge. It was a massive mountain to me. God, how do you expect me to do this? I don't know nothing. Yeah, I've taken all those things, but I don't know how to apply myself and organize this and organize that because that's where my brain was at the time. I didn't realize it was just a simple walk of being led by God and doing what he shows you to do. I'm thinking I, I don't know how to coordinate. I don't know how to do this with, with big groups or you know, how do I do things? Like, God, how do I do these things? But again, God took me step by step. So I had to make that first step. Okay, God, yes. The first step was in my heart and my confession to God. God, yes, I will go full time. But how? How is it going to play out? I waited another two years. That was 2003 into 2005. And finally, God gave me a dream. He's big enough to speak to you guys. When I had that dream, it was like real life, like I'm sat here speaking to you now. I could feel everything around me, a little cold coming in from the kitchen because Kim left the door open. It was like that. I could feel everything. You know, it was like really, really real. And I woke up that morning. It was only a couple of hours sleep I had. And I woke up knowing this was the day I was going to go full time, give up the window cleaning and go full time for God. And But the next hurdle was Kim because she wasn't on board but a good few months had passed and she changed her mind when i told her, she said oh, it was about time i've been waiting <laughs> what happened god was working in her heart i'm thinking i had to take care of those things but like god said to me in the beginning lawrence when he was encouraging me to make this decision you take care of my business and i will take care of your business isn't that Matthew 6, 30, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things you need will be added unto you? Yes, it is, because our God's a faithful God. He's a mighty God, mighty powerful God. And he's faithful, guys, like faithful to me. Like, who am I? You know, and he's, he's faithful to me. Like, God is more faithful to me than I've ever been to him. And he knows my journey. He knows what he wants from me and what I'm going to, he can do for me, what I can achieve with him working in me it's not me leading it it's him doing it so when we take our egos out and realize it's not us it's him then he can really do more work with you he can really open up your understanding give you that spiritual wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of jesus christ and god's got great plans for everyone on it everyone on it god has got great plans for you to be his lights to be his voice to be that point of contact for someone that needs to be reconciled to God. He needs you. God needs you. We need God. Yes, I understand that. But switch the angle around. He also needs you. He's given you the words of ministry of reconciliation. And so if you desire laborers, you will get them. Like I said the last couple of weeks, if you're believing for something, you will receive it. You will receive it. If you're genuinely believing, You'll receive, if you're sitting there procrastinating, just mental assenting and not doing anything, you need to move with the action, the momentum of God. And then as you do that, all the things that are in your life that need to take care of, he'll take care of it. He'll repair it. He'll restore it. He'll give you double for your trouble. He'll promote you so that you'll further promote him. It's not because you're anything. It's because he's everything. But he blesses you in it. Right? He blesses you in it. You get blessed. You know, and you get to know more people. Look, look at my circle. It was only us in Bristol. I know everyone around the world. Like, praise God for that. And um, and God has brought amazing people in my life. We can't do it without one another. We need one another. Like, you, you can't say, I have no need of you. We need one another, no matter where you are at. 
we need each other guys you know god's called us to a body and he works with us individually but he's also called us to a body what part of the body of christ do you connect to what part of the body of christ are you moving with this is where there's safety in the multitude of counselors this is where god really works and instructs his people and so like i would encourage you just to give your desires to god do you know what you want you know, once you've got your goals, can you see them? Write your goal first, but can you see it in here? Ask God to build the vision. What does vision do? It gives you pictures, right? The guy that was blind when he got ministered to, like he was, he didn't get the complete healing, did he? He could see men as trees, and then Jesus gave him more instruction, then he could see perfectly. You've got to, got to have a vision and direction. God has got a direction for you. And where you're being fed right now, that direction is coming, you know, but are we listening or are we letting the old things distract us back and make us doubt? So I would just encourage you, go to God, say, Father, energize me. Give me the fruit that I need. Give me the encouragement I need. Give me the direction I need. And I'll follow. I'll follow. And as you follow, as you take those steps, you'll start to see the picture of enlarge like and you start to see your steps enlarge your it bring you into a large place you know where you can really speak for him where you can really be an encourager of other people that's what it's all about we're here to encourage others we're here to reconcile men and women back to god to help other people rise up to be of service do loss to be that bond slave unto god not unto man i'm not a bond slave to any man I'm a bond slave to my Lord, but I also know where I'm connected to my point of contact in the earth, where I'm getting fed good food, sound doctrine that is not all over the place. But it's a it's a clear direction. OK, follow this encouragement. OK, I receive and do when you receive and do. It's not that you're is blind following the blind. You know what I mean? It's like you're receiving instruction. You're seeing the fruit. You want the same things. People come to me because they want to do the same things because they've seen it in my life as a witness to them. But if they don't do, if they don't copy in a sense, like a copycat, like an imitator, then they're not going to see it. You've got to start somewhere. Paul says, be followers of me, imitate me, imitate me. What do kids do? They imitate. They're not doing exactly what their dad's doing, but they're imitating the actions and the heart and the responses. So when we start to follow yeah we will start off a little bit manufactured but then god brings it into the point where we're being led where we're listening when then people start to follow us god will then start sending those laborers so it all depends what you desire do you desire laborers do you desire to see many fellowships this is what i'm about i'm about pleasing god and to see the word move all over the world which god's going to do by us it's by us and so my vision I'm not going to tell all my goals and visions, but it's to see more fellowships, more laborers come, more consistency, more focus uh, from the people I'm encouraging. And that uh, we're not doting about questions, but we're taking the ball by the horns. We're taking the words from God and running with it. You know, uh, the word of God is quick, powerful and sharp. You know, the, the word of Jehovah runs very swiftly, but. If you're doting here and doting there, you ain't running swiftly, babe. You really ain't. And I'll just be straightforward with you. You need It takes a focus. So are you more dedicated to your own thing? Or are you more dedicated to listen to do what God tells you to do? Because that's what it's going to take if you're going to be really moving. And I've learned this the hard way, <laughs> but it's a great way. Because now I'm in a better place because God humbled me, showed me what I needed to do. And now he's showing me to be bold to declare these things to encourage and so we're all free with to move with god no one could tell you what to do i you know we submit ourselves one to another with the love of god no um not submit ourselves because we, we better listen it's a wrong heart i better do this no it's a wrong heart i want to do this father i really what does it take for me to get the results these people are getting which are godly results where your power is at work, where that power has blessed my life, where it's changed me, where it's, a, it's changed my whole outlook and my walk with you. What do I need to do? Follow, listen and do. Just listen and do. And you're coming to your own. You know, you're coming where you'll have your labours, your field, 
God wants you to have many, many fields, not just one fellowship. He wants you to have many fields where those people in those fields, the ones you minister to are rising up and they're also starting there. So we encourage people. That's how it is. Each one win one. Go stand, speak. Continue steadfastly. You know, uh, have great hope and anticipation of the future. You know, because God's got it there for you. His thoughts are good towards you to give you hope and a future and expected. And he wants you to abound in expectation. But if we're stopping and starting and we got a hurdle there um, and it stops you, then how can you abound in hope? You need to look to God to get you over that hurdle. Was it Madeline was talking about racehorses? And I was thinking of the hurdles, you know, the Grand National. And if you think you've got like 40 horses lining up to run this big race, four and a half mile race. And a lot of those horses fall at the first hurdle. And there's only maybe a handful, 10, 15, maybe some more that finish that race. It's a, like it's a long and the, and the hurdles are massive. And they're trained to jump them, you know, but we're in training all the time in a sense, you know, we're ready to go. But we're still learning. We're still playing out this walk with God. We still uh, need to listen. Sometimes we can be doing so well that we don't think we need anyone. Oh, I've, I've been around. I understand this. Oh, I know what you're saying. I've heard this before. But are you living it? And this is what ministers do. They encourage people to receive the word. This is the direction. And if you go with that and you practice that, then God can really do amazing work through you. So uh, every leader wants their people to rise up and be great. You know, they become less, they be and the people you're speaking become more. Like you see with Sangha, you see this, these people are moving, man. They're moving. Sangha is a humble man. And look, many people have risen up. Many people have risen up. Thousands. I'm one of them. You're one of them. And let's continue in that way. Just let's listen, focus in. Going to Windsor is going to be another great time. And you can see I'm slow, so I'm going back for the 20 or odd time now. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to it because I know there's so much to learn and um, and to come back and implement and to practice. And um, and at the same time, God's given me my work. I know I'll be going to Norway in April. So that door's open to me. I pray for that because we had the lockdown. So that was three years gone there. And I haven't gone a couple of years before that because there was different things going on there. But now God, through prayer, through um, a desire to God for that place, because it's big in my heart in a way. I've been going there for many years through invitation, being invited, never inviting myself. Uh, went there seven times in one year. They asked me to keep coming. And I know that's I'm a fellow helper in that field. And so uh, just recently, I get this desire to God. I said, you need to open this up now. No, isn't it time, God? I, and I know you're working this in me. And then all of a sudden I get into a conversation with one believer there and another believer that says, I'm thinking of getting you over for April. God's putting it in my heart. And God, before she told me that, put it in my heart and mind. And so I knew this is going to happen. It will happen one way or another. I'll, I'll be going there because I know I got work there to do. It's not about going and just, oh, I've been to Norway. No, there's people there with wonderful hearts and uh, I can get also encouragement from them. And then when someone comes in from the outside, it always builds up. A prophet is without honour save in his own country, right? These are truths. These are things that are true. So let's believe God for the labourers. Let's believe for great outreach. Keep following the encouragement. Keep practising the encouragement. Stay connected, guys. I keep saying it. Stay connected with heart. Do it unto God and your direction. And, uh, you know, for me, I if I could call Sangate every day, I would. But I know he's very busy also. But I speak to him at least once a week. It's important. It's important for me. And I get so ble I get so much from it. And I think people that connect to me also get so much from it. And they know when God's energizing. People know when you're speaking by the Spirit. People know when God's speaking. It's, it's I'm just a face and a mouth. But it's God's words. When God is energizing, yeah, some of my things can come in. But it's God's words in the majority. So really walk with God. Be led by the Spirit. Keep a humble and meek heart. Keep with him. Say what you want, not what you see. So life-changing. 
that changed my life when God told me that by the back door. You've been saying what you see, Lawrence. You need to say what you want, not what you see. And man, that was just like a, the vision right there to begin. To, and it was a beginning point for me. And since then, everything around me changed.